So I finally got my hands on a Dexcom G7. So today I want to do a full review, talk about the good, the bad, as well as talking about a new mystery part that changes everything for CGMs. So let's not waste any time and get started. The first thing that I wanted to talk about is the size. So not only is the sensor much smaller, which most of us already know about, the packaging is also dramatically reduced in size. Instead of having two separate large boxes like with the G6 to house both the transmitter and the sensor, the new Dexcom G7 doesn't require a separate transmitter, so they were able to cut down on packaging. And they put everything in this all little tiny inclusive box. In addition, they also dramatically reduced the size of the sensor applicator itself, going from this monster down to just this small little guy. All right, so what about putting on the sensor itself? That's another area that I found was much easier with the G7 compared to the G6. And again, it all comes back to the lack of a separate transmitter. All you do is you grab the small sensor applicator, you unscrew the top, clean the arm, press down on the applicator. And this is important because if you don't press down on the sensor applicator, the button won't engage, which is actually a nice safety feature to make sure that you don't press it accidentally before you're ready to actually put the sensor on. This is similar to the little tap that they had on the G6, but a much more fancy way of doing it. So once you tap that button, you are done. The G7 is on the arm and ready to go. It does also come with a little over patch that's in the box. No need to order it separately like you did with the G6. Once the sensor is on the arm, this is where a little bit of magic happens. Now, with all other continuous glucose monitors, the Freestyle Libre, the Dexcom G6. Once you apply the sensor, nothing actually happens until you initiate a further step. So with the Libre, you actually had to scan the sensor to get it started. With the Dexcom G6, you had to press that little button, start sensor. And a lot of times, if you forgot to hit that, maybe a few hours went by, you got busy, you lost all of that time. The sensor did not start until you actually activated it. But with this sensor, the new Dexcom G7, it actually has a little magnet that's built into both the sensor applicator and the sensor itself. And once those two magnets are separated, the sensor automatically starts and your 30 minute warm up process begins. That's right, the Dexcom G7, if you're not aware, only has a 30 minute warm up time, which is down from two hours with the G6. Anyway, so back to those magnets. So this is both a good thing and it's also a little bit of a bad thing, and let me explain why. So this is good because I'm sure many of us have applied a new sensor before, and then a few hours later realize I forgot to hit the start sensor button. So this eliminates that from ever happening again. In fact, after I applied the sensor, I got caught up doing something else, and I didn't wind up coming back to the app for a few minutes to put in the sensor code. To my surprise, when I went into the app, the sensor had already started warming up and it was already down to just 22 minutes left with that warm up time. So how is this bad? Well, for those of you who like to soak your sensor, meaning applying a new sensor before the old one expires to improve accuracy during those first 24 unreliable hours. And if you want a little bit more info about soaking your sensor, I'll leave a link to that video in the show notes as well as link it to the video itself. So because of these magnets, the days of soaking your sensor are over. But my hope is with the new improved accuracy of the G7, soaking your sensor may no longer be necessary. So let's talk about that next. So the G7 has improved accuracy. The G7 has an overall MARD score of 8.2%, which is really just phenomenal. The previous model, the G6, had a 9.0. And MARD, if you're not familiar with the term, lower the MARD score, the more accurate the CGM. So how accurate was the new Dexcom G7? Well, to test this a few times throughout the 10 days when I was wearing the sensor, I I compared the Dexcom G7 readings to a finger stick. And the first finger stick that I did, the first time I wanted to test it was right when I put on that brand new sensor because like I said before, a lot of times that first day with the new CGM can be the most inaccurate. So to my surprise, when putting on the new CGM, doing a finger stick, I found the reading was actually within a few points of a finger stick. The Dexcom G7 was giving me a 129 and the finger stick was at a 122. So this was just a few points off. And again, that was just within a few minutes of starting the new Dexcom G7. I also did this a few times throughout the week just to continue to compare to see what the accuracy was like. And I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised Every time I did a finger stick, it was always just within a few points of the actual reading on the CGM. So accuracy is definitely improved on this new Dexcom G7. So it's possible that maybe not being able to soak this new sensor isn't so much of a big deal after all. Now let's go back to size because we talked about this a little bit before when we were talking about the box and the sensor applicator itself. But let's talk about the sensor itself, which was promised to be much, much smaller. So Dexcom actually said it's supposed to be 60% smaller than its predecessor. I try to get some comparison shots to really emphasize just how much smaller it really is. It's hard to tell because that overpatch makes it seem so much larger, but in actuality, it is much, much smaller. The thing I appreciated most about it was just how thin it was, how flush it was to the skin. It really didn't stick out much at all. 
compared to the Dexcom G6. So size was really another big improvement with the Dexcom G7, and I really noticed that during the 10 days that I was wearing it. So let's talk about the software side of things next. In particular, let's talk about the new upgraded app for the Dexcom G7. The new app is completely redesigned for the G7, outside of a much needed facelift, much fancier graphics, and just overall being more aesthetically pleasing. There's also quite a few upgrades under the hood compared to the Dexcom G6. So with the G6, the data that was on the G6 was pretty limited. Anytime you wanted to access anything beyond 24 hours of data, you had to load up Clarity, which was a second application, so you had to go through a process of loading up a second app to see any additional data beyond those 24 hours. Well, the good news is with the G7, Clarity is built right into the app. In fact, it's right below your regular glucose readings. All you do is scroll down just a little bit on the app, and you have all of your Clarity data right there, which is really great. You can see the last 3, 7, 14, 30, and 90 days of data, all right from the main screen, which is really, really nice. Another thing that I really appreciated, this is something minor, but I just really like the fact that when you're on the main screen, you can actually touch your glucose data and see each individual reading. This is something that you could do on the G6, but you had to turn it into landscape mode to access it. So now that's readily accessible right from the main screen. You can put your finger there and access all of the individual glucose datas throughout the day on that main home screen. Moving along with software, one of the biggest upgrades, things that I think a lot of people were waiting for, was the changes in the alarms themselves. They added some alarm flexibility. So not only does the new G7 allow you to access what's called quiet mode, meaning that all alarms are turned to vibrate, even the urgent low glucose alarm. So anytime maybe you wanna make sure your phone's not gonna go off, it's not gonna beep at you, you're in a meeting, you're taking a test, you can actually just hit the quiet mode and it'll turn all alarms to vibrate. So you don't have to worry about that. So that's one nice upgrade with the alarms. Another one that I really appreciated is a new feature called delay first alert. So let's say your blood sugar is running a little bit high or you anticipate that it's probably gonna be going high. Maybe you had a piece of cake or something. You know your blood sugar is gonna go high. You don't wanna know about it for a little while you actually have an option to delay that first alert. So you can delay the first alert anywhere from 15 minutes to four hours. So this is another nice feature. And then finally, for those of you who like a variety of alerts and ringtones for all of your high and low blood sugars, you'll be happy to know that the Dexcom G7 has added a few new ringtones for those options. So a couple other areas that I wanted to go over. First, the adhesive. This is something that I was a little bit worried about with the new Dexcom G7 because the G6 had by far one of the best adhesives for any CGM on the market. I can safely say that I've never had a G6 fall off prematurely before the 10 days. The G7, I was a little bit worried because I knew with the G7, the adhesive was much smaller because the sensor itself was smaller. So I was a little concerned that maybe it wouldn't make it the 10 days. Well, I'm happy to report that by day 10, the adhesive was still going strong, no issues at all. It did not fall off prematurely. Mind you, this was using the included overpatch. But the next sensor that I put on, I'm gonna try to see how it does without the overpatch, maybe just using some skin tack to see if it can stay on just by itself. Now, on day 10 using the CGM, I was welcomed with a very nice surprise. So with the G6, once you hit day 10, your sensor was dead in the water, done. With the G7 though, kind of like a nice gentle nudge, it tells you, listen, I know you hit 10 days, but I get it, you're busy. I'll give you another 12 hours before you need to change the sensor out. So that was really, really nice. Once you hit 10 days, you have this 12 hour grace period. So technically the new G7 lasts for 10 and a half days, which makes it last 12 hours longer than the G6. All right, one other thing I wanted to mention was the Apple Watch app. At this time, the application is very similar to the G6. I didn't really notice any significant changes from the G6 to the G7 Apple Watch app. But with that being said, I have heard that they do have plans to upgrade the Apple Watch app to allow it to be used independent of a smartphone, meaning you can take your Apple Watch out without your phone and it'll get readings through the Dexcom G7 independent of a smartphone, which is really nice. If you wanna go out for a jog, maybe go exercise or maybe jump in the pool, you don't have to worry about your phone being near you. You can get all of the readings right to the watch app. So this is something that's not out yet, but they do have plans for it in the future. All right, well, that was my review on the Dexcom G7. Impressive new CGM with some great new features. If you're using it, let me know in the comments what you think about it. And thank you as always for watching the video.